Hey, there we go. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Hey, head horses, it's happening. It is, it is happening. <laughs> Come really quickly, guys. Um, <clears throat> let's do my little intro. Woohoo! Welcome back, my fellow makers and foam fanatics. In today's episode, we're going to be fixing old costumes. A long time ago, I went to BlizzCon dressed in my Red Demon costume. And of course, uh, I had a great time making it. I rushed to build this costume. And in rushing and building it, there were some things after a while I was like, I wasn't happy with. And I was so hurried to get it done, I couldn't go back and fix things. And so I realized over the years, I don't wear this costume so much because there's a lot of problems with it. But I realized uh, I was going to sell it. And my oldest went, don't do that. That's a cool costume. Just fix it. And I thought, you know. She's right. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to take some parts of my old costumes, uh, well, parts of this old costume, and I'm going to actually um, do some work on them and improve them and to make it where I can wear it a little bit more frequently. So we're going to talk all about that. So if you guys are ready, let's get started. Ooh, ooh, wow. You know something I wasn't recording? Ah. <laughs> uh, I am just on fire today, guys. Hold on. I'm going to have to repeat myself because I'm doing this for a video. Okay, let's try again real quickly. <laughs> this is what I'm like on my Twitch streams, but I'm doing this all on YouTube now. So let's do this one more time. Besides, it'll be a lot easier because I already did it once before. Hey, Lubicon Cosplay, thank you. And Krim, guys, thanks. Thanks for hanging out. Here we go. Again, from the top. <clears throat> let's start recording. Hey, Matthew, welcome. Start recording. Here we go. All right, now we're recording. <clears throat> Welcome back, my fellow makers. That's right here on Evil Ted Live on YouTube. Today, uh, this episode, we're going to be working on old costumes. I built this red demon. Um, I built a red demon costume for BlizzCon a while back. And I had so much fun making it. It was just kind of uh, rushing to get it done. And in building things, sometimes I saw something I wasn't happy with, but it was under a deadline, so I couldn't change things. And so the costume looked great. Uh, and years went by, I realized I don't wear it that often because there's problems with it. And so I was going to sell it. And my oldest uh, daughter, Dorothy, said, that'd be a mistake because people really like that costume. You should fix it. So I thought, give credit where credit is due. I thought, you know, she's right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, fix it. So I am working today on some parts of the costumes uh, I'm going to fine tune and change. I'm going to go into the details of what I don't like about them and why I'm changing them. So if you guys are ready, let's get started. That's a good intro, right? <laughs> the costume I've been waiting for a long time. Yes. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, before we go to overhead cam, I'll talk about some things really quickly here. Oh, let's see just text me. What's this? Uh... Oh, surprise, I am, exclamation point. Uh, it's my friend, John. He's like, are you streaming today? I'm like, I am. <laughs> um, so what we're doing is um, I built this red demon costume. Uh, I made these spikes. And again, things I've learned, um, this was foam, and you make things really sharp. And over time, they get getting worn off and bent and destroyed. So I'm gonna fix those, and um, these gloves are cool. And, uh, <laughs> great intro, thanks. Um, these forearms, I made it, oh, I'll just make them snug fit. So um, I pushed my hand through them, and it's a little tight to push through, but then once you get on the, but I, it's so tight to slip them on, I forgot to compensate for the fabric. I have this like fake chain mail I wear. So I'm trying to push that through, I was like, and it can't. It's like next to impossible. So it's such a struggle. So I'm going to fix. I'm going to. Um, I already tried heating it and stretching it, and that wasn't working. So I realized I'm going to have to grind the foam in here. But I don't want to do a rotary tool. So I have some ideas. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to fix these forearms. And then there's other pieces we're going to get into. But I'll do that on the overhead version of it. So. But everybody, guys, thanks for, uh, thanks for joining me today on my live stream. Um, I'm going to start doing this more on YouTube. Uh, I think YouTube is better set up. Uh, most of my fans are here, so it's great to do it from here. So, all right, let's get down to business, shall we? Overhead. Whoops. Wow, what a dirty way. Let me, let's clean this area real quick here. Move some stuff aside. Got the hot, hot glue 
gun you can right there. Clear the front. Get to try to clear the frame. Hold on, guys. I'll be right with you. Let's move the microphone so you can actually hear me. There you go. Right here, my face. Adjust the camera. Right. <coughs> Here we go. <clears throat> All right, here that these are the uh, forearms I made for the costume. Uh, again, uh, these are patterns I had for my Vampire Hunter D costume, and of course I was like built them, um, and I used a thick foam. And the problem is that I I like the tailorness of this, the, the the swoop. It's a little bit of a pressure fit. You have to push your hand through to get them through, and like. You have to struggle to get them through like this. Like, and it's such a struggle. And then with fabric, I couldn't get them on. So it was just such a nightmare. So I need to widen this. Also, these guys are pointy. Now, when you make something out of foam that's pointy, um, I've discovered this from my friend, SKS Props, Stephen, that if it's when it's raw foam, before you seal it, take super glue, put some rubber gloves on, Put some super glue and massage the uh, super glue into the tips of the foam. What that does, the super glue will soak into the foam and make the tip really rigid. Now, it won't rigid enough to kill anybody, but it makes the, so that it doesn't wear off. When you just do straight foam and rubber over time, it just gets worn off. So, unfortunately, I already sealed these things up. So, I took some lacquer thinner and stripped off the paint right down to the raw rubber. And I just put super glue over this. So, now it's stiff. So, it won't just wear out. And I did that for both ends. So I'm doing that. So fixing these tips. And uh, I haven't, and this guy too, did the super glue on this. And I'm going to do this here. So this is still, for example, I hear that's yeah, foam. And over time, it's just going to get worn off. So I'm going to go ahead and put some rubber gloves on, take some lacquer thinner, strip this down, put some super glue on it, and we'll get back to it. So we're going to do that. We're going to fix this, and we're going to widen these guys out. So I'll tell you what, let's go ahead and take care of this stuff because I already did these glues. I did this stuff off camera. So I'll show you the technique that I did. Again, it works better <laughs> to do this when it's raw foam. So the super glue soaks into the foam. And when I watched my friend Steven, SKS Props, I'm like, oh, that's a brilliant idea. I wish I knew about it yesterday. All right, so let me get some lacquer. Is there lacquer right here? Yeah, there's some lacquer. Get a paper towel. Hold on. Hey chat, what's up? Let me chat, catch up with chat real quick. The spikes number are awesome, and they are get damaged. Yeah, it's really fast. The problem is you got uh, the Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, Sir. Um, so Luna Bella, Luna, Luna Bella, Luna Bella. Anyway, I'm so bad with names. Hey Tyrannus, what's up? Good day. Um, yeah, it's spiky stuff. So what I'm gonna do? I, I'm gonna go into the shoulders, but I'm gonna do that later. I'm gonna get these guys done first, and we'll jump on the shoulders. But yeah, I have these shoulders I made with these super spikes on them. So I couldn't transport them. I couldn't go anywhere because the spikes are so big. So I did this whole big video about putting magnets in. So I did all that. And then they stick on. But if you're a con, you bump a doorway or a corner, the, the horns just go flying off. And so it's another. And after a while, I'm just like, you know something? I'm just going to make the spikes permanent and make them shorter. Just make them permanent, shorter, and then you know, be done with it. I'm not. Because I want to wear this costume again. I just gotta, I just gotta fix it. In order, so my plan is, um, so I would like to start wearing costumes at conventions, and I don't do that normally. I know I bumped into Camus, and she was like, "It's a lot of work," and, it's, and so like, I said, "Yeah, it is." So I don't normally do it, but I thought um, if I did wear a costume, I'd like to wear this one. So I'm going to fix it, make it a little more. To, I can transport with it easy, easier, and uh, take all some of these spikes. Oh, I'm sorry, overhead guys. All right, I got some lacquer thinner. Oops, careful, Ted. That'll melt the table. All right, so I'm just gonna take what I'm doing. Now, the reason I'm using lacquer thinner and not alcohol is I wanna strip everything off this. I don't. I wanna take the uh, the paint off. I wanna take the uh, the clear coat, everything I put on this thing. You can use alcohol, but all this stuff that's on here, I wanna, I wanna get down to the raw, just the straight rubber. 
Now with this costume, I sealed it with uh, R60 natural rubber. I don't use it that I don't use that stuff that much anymore. I use Creature Cast. I love Creature Cast. That's kind of my go-to now when I seal up costumes. But let's adjust this camera too. It's a little far out here. Hold on, guys. Bring it down a little bit more. There you go. That's, yeah, that's better. Yeah, see? Now. Let's get some super glue. Where's that glue? I had glue. There, there it is. Okay. This I'm using is uh, I'm using DAP Rapid Fuse. And I like this stuff because it's really thick. Let's kill that light. It's a bit bright. Okay. All right, here we go. So I'm going to take some. Oh. I like this glue. It is thick, though. <laughs> That's the reason I like it. It's a little thick. I don't use super glue that often. But when I do, I like the thick stuff. A little thick. There you go. Let's see, just put a bead like that. Then with this glue, I'm just gonna go like this. Just focusing on the tip. That's all I want to do. Stiffen it up a little bit. Too. I'm just put a little bit more right back here on the back side here. Now, I don't go all the way down I because my fear is if you go too far, it's just going to start cracking. I'm just mostly concerned about the tip because that's the part that always uh, gets damaged. So I'm just going to do that. I don't mind the rest of this part flake being flexible, but the uh, just the tip part always gets damaged. Yeah, because I like the, you know, the doing it on, when it's raw foam is a lot easier, so I recommend do that instead of doing this <laughs> this is this is called going backwards on this one but anyway this is going to work there you go i have some kicker too i'm gonna take this glove off and i have some uh i have some instant some instant kick here i'm gonna spray very lightly now do not put this stuff on your skin people just when you spray make sure you get, do not put this on your stuff is nasty works for super glue but Yeah, there you go. Perfect. All right. Catch up with uh, chat. Uh, Ted really to fix. <laughs> oh, um. <clears throat> hey, hello from Scotland. Uh, that field, field walker. Welcome, guys. I'm sorry to catch up with chat really quickly. Uh, welcome from Scotland. Thank you, Scotland, for joining us. Dude, if there's a Scotland convention, a Scotland con, write your write to them and ask them <laughs> tell them you want me as a guest i would love to come um uh, so uh, leaving in, uh, i'm leaving in to go get to you go, oh going ape yeah tell going ape costume i said hello uh i heard about five double entries already this morning and it's only monday <laughs> What is this? Uh, what costume is this? Oh, it's my red demon. Uh, if you go to my website, eviltedsmith.com, and there's a, a folder called My Cosplays, it's that costume. Um, uh, hello there. Your videos really help me get in, uh, getting the motivation to start uh, cosplaying, and now I'm almost finished with my Mass Effect costume. So thank you for your advice. You're so welcome. Thank you. And please subscribe and tell your friends. That's awesome. Thank you. Um, really need to fix some stuff. Original Dark Troopers. Uh, is this some kind of? Oh, uh, lacquer. Uh, lacquer. Yeah, lacquer thinner. It's good. For, it's for lacquer-based paints. Uh, it's like acetone. Yeah, it's the same thing. If you don't have lacquer thinner, you can use acetone as well too. It's, they're both really toxic and, and bad stuff, but they strip paint like like nobody's business. Um, the camera. Uh, 
uh, flashing. Yeah, guys, you know some the the neat. I noticed it started flashing once I started recording. I didn't do it before. As soon as I hit record, it started flashing. So something's with the recording on OBS. Anyway, I, I see it too. Um, the camera is silly. That's exactly what it is. A hello from um, country Melf. Oh, Ireland. Hello, Ireland. Welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Uh, standing on my Mass Effect costume too. Which uh, character did you, did you make? Oh, people. Excellent guys. Talk. I love when people talk to each other. Ted just thought there. Just thought we're here. Matthew. Just a thought here, Ted. Maybe wipe acetone on the inside and dissolve away from the inner of the foam. You know something? You, you don't have any control. I don't, anything like that is kind of like weird. I already subscribed. Fantastic. Excellent. Thank you. Um, anyway, what we're doing to, yeah. Foam doesn't really, like using solvents to, detect foam it's really uncontrollable and a lot of foam l200 uh, not l200 but eva foam is really durable and strong so it doesn't melt like that so i find is uh, it's better to um sand so what we're gonna do today anyway let's get down let me show you what my plan is so we got that part together let's get back to the work here we go overhead all right now we're gonna work on the interior here let's do one at a time here for a moment now the clearance in here is really, really tight. And I can see uh, what I would have done differently is make this out of thinner foam. I think this is 10 mil or maybe it should eight, but uh, I just want to shave it down, but not. A, I don't want to, I can't get in with a rotary tool. So I went ahead and found some uh, grit. It's like 80 grit, I love this stuff, but I can't get it in there. So I started thinking, I got a piece of PVC pipe and this, so I'm gonna cut these corners off on the bandsaw and hot glue them on here, so that's my plan. So let me just take this to the bandsaw and cut these guys off. So my plan, we're gonna hot glue these guys on. Got my hot glue gun, got my shear bonder. Let's do this. And just stick this guy on like that. Hold. And uh, what this will allow me to do is I'll able, I'm able to get in there and just rub it on the spots that I want to get it. This is pretty rough, so it should break, shave the phone. I don't need to do a lot, but I need at least like a quarter of an inch all the way around so I can get these guys on easier. Yeah, let's do both sides. <laughs> let's do it. Some hot glue. All right, holding. All right, let that cool. Uh, somebody said that, uh, they don't, oh, so you don't, they don't make, uh, too bad. The hot glue sold in France is really bad quality. I am so sorry to hear that. I did not know that. Um, I know when we make stuff, I make videos of this. A lot of stuff is based on here, the stuff you get from the States. And I always try to tell people that if you can't get your hands on something, you know, try to find something it's equally compatible, but I, unfortunately I'm Sorry about the, um, the hot glue. Oh, Trance Cox goes, Ted's not streaming on uh, Twitch anymore. Here's the thing, Trance, is that um, 
I like Twitch. Um, I realized that uh, my algorithms and my videos, most of my work and my, uh, my fan base is all based on um, YouTube. And I always rush to get videos up every periodically on uh, YouTube. And I found out when I do live streams, it still adds a video to my YouTube channel and it builds up, builds up my algorithms and it's good. So I figured, yeah, I'm just start doing live stream builds on, uh, on here on YouTube. I mean, I'm not going to get rid of Twitch, but I'm really going to focus on that. So anyway, this is looking pretty, uh, yeah. still give a couple more minutes, let it cool off because I'm, because I need that glue to be really dry. So I'm going to get in there and break it. Oh, it's going to be perfect. That's exactly what I need. Uh, the best equivalent is a urethane resin that works really well. Yeah, um, there's there's um, goop. One of my favorite glue, I mean, this takes like a 24 hours to dry. But uh, I used to do uh, on my strapping with hot glue, and I don't do it anymore because hot glue over time gets stiff and brittle and it breaks and chunks off. And it just I've had it right in the middle of a con your strap pops off and it's like even though i glue the hot glue to the foam it's just like it's just over time it pulling and ripping and coming off where if you do a strap down with the goop it never ever ever comes off because it's it's it glues and it's got a little bit of flexibility to it so it's more uh durable and lasts longer so i stop hot gluing straps i strictly glue i here's the deal though it takes you can handle it within a couple hours but for it to, be, to work leave it alone for at least you know a full day it's like glue it and don't, you know, and let then deal with it tomorrow. But yeah, let it at least have good eight hour dry. It says maximum is 24 hours, but it's great stuff. I don't, so that's what I'm gonna do on these costumes too. All these straps and where the Velcro was, I'm peeling them off, taking the hot glue off and re-gluing everything down with goop. So I'm gonna wear this costume. Cause I like this costume and I wanna wear it more. And what started the whole thing was I did a photo shoot. I'm doing a, uh, I realize it's all, I'm going on nine years on my YouTube channel, and I need to make it a new intro. So I'm working on a new intro for my channel, and I want to have a thing with me and my costumes. So my buddy went out and shot it, and I was just like, man, those costumes, it's great, but it's just the, the spikes are so big, and they were flying off, and I'm like, i got to fix this. So I was frustrated I was going to sell it, but then Dorothy convinced me otherwise not to do that, so... All right, I think we're ready. Let's do it. <clears throat> All right, it's on there. So now the plan is I'm going to reach in here like this and just push and go and start digging on the sides of the foam on the inside of the tight spots where I know they are. <sighs> Let's see if this works because it sounds good in theory, right? Am I even ripping the foam? Man. I don't know if that's going to work or not, guys. Because I want, you know, sure, you'd like to stick a Dremel in there, but I'm not going to be, I can't get in there with a Dremel. Sorry. Let's bring this up a little bit so you guys can see what's going on here. You know, I need something coarser. It's like it's like the theory works. It's just I need something coarser. There's this the stuff you used to be able to buy called dragon skin uh, for drywall, but they stopped making it. Um, but that's exactly what I need in here. Hold on, I might have a scrap of it in my in my work box. So let me pop over there and see if I can find it. I think I used to have some.
<laughs> I found it now. It's a bit wide. Something about maybe cutting in half. But then I would, yeah, if I haven't used it to such this, would just, man, this would do the trick though. But the thing is, I'd have to cut the, here, let's do a video. Sorry guys, overhead. Well, I found it. This is dragon skin, and it's great for just knocking down things really, really quick. Unfortunately, I stopped making it, but here it is. And so for me to get in there, um, this would definitely do the trick. This will tear the foam out fast. Um, I have to, in order for me to get that in here, I do the damage I need. I'm going to cut this. I'm, of course, I'm going to take this to the bandsaw and cut this in half. I'll be right back. All right, well, we're gonna do the same thing. We're going to take these guys and glue them on. Although I think I'm only gonna glue one just because this is really sharp metal, perforated metal. And this will definitely do what I need it to do. So, so we're gonna go ahead and glue this on. Face cam, because I have to keep this hot glue gun. Um, um, uh, let's catch up with chat. Yeah, I need to figure out the strapping on a couple of the costumes. Yeah, trust me, dude. Trust me. Peel off the hot glue stuff. Tear off the hot glue. Right down the foam and the strap and you use goop. Or E6000. Or e the, the glue tube. Both of them. Both this one or E6000. The slow cure stuff. It's strong. Works perfectly. Crazy Uncle Glue is uh, getting thrown off my live on Twitter. Just keep over to Twitch. Twitter has some. I didn't know Twitter had live stuff. In French, it's always use neoprene glue. Apart from the straps, where I use hot glue. Oh God! Okay, there you go. You find an alternative. Excellent. Uh, or live on YouTube. See what you do to me, <laughs> Joe. Don't blame me, Joe. Um, hey, Pinkthorn says that uh, that it that and replacing the crappy off-brand Dremel with a real one and getting cutting the uh, stormtrooper armor out. Yeah. I, I did the same thing. I have like an expensive rotary tool and I killed it and then it got a Dremel instead. So yeah, uh, unmute, <laughs> unmute. Am I muted? You guys can hear me, right? Can you hear me? Hold on. Making sure my, oh no, my mic's working. Okay, just double checking. Um, is it hot glue? Heating up, heat up. Hold on. Is it hot enough yet? Yeah, give it a couple more minutes. But yeah, I'm digging this. I really like these um, this costume. And the irony is I built the chest piece and everything that you think would be the big con It all breaks down to nothing. I, I, it all breaks into super small pieces. The horns come apart and the spikes. And then after a while, I was like, I don't wear it that much. So now the plan is I'm going to get this fixed up. Uh, also, to the boots, like the shin guards, I made them like tubes you slide your feet into, which was a mistake. I should have just did like front halves. But since they're already done, I'm going to cut up high behind them. I'm gonna, of course, I'm going to stream all that as well, too. Um, the band's all noise. <laughs> oh, yeah, but the, the it's way off camera. And I only cut for a couple seconds. So I'm not muting anything on this stream, people. Um, so I'm sorry, guys, because my plan is to take this video that's being recorded to cut it down and put it back on YouTube as a shorter video. I I don't I'm so still learning about YouTube, so I know the video right now is going to get views and algorithms and stuff like that. But nobody's going to watch this whole long video of me doing this, so I'm probably going to end up cutting it down and reposting it as a shorter video. Um, yeah, because this this metal yeah that sandpaper is just is, was an epic fail. It's not going to work. Wait a minute, hold on. Hold on, wait a minute. I need to glue this. Wait. All right. I'm looking at this, I realize I don't really need to glue it onto this PVC pipe. I can just reach right now. Yeah, reach right here and just do this right now.
see this. Because there was another, I thought about cutting like a big wedge out of it or something like that. But once I do that, it's just, I don't know if that's going to work. All right, guys, hold on. Because uh, once they slide, I can feel, yeah, all right, see, I can feel what's catching. Here, hold on, it's getting here too. I didn't say the solution was going to be easy. <laughs> it's like, it's all doable. It's just going to, it's just going to take some time, man. But this is, I can already feel it's just tearing the foam out of it, which is exactly what I needed. And the sad thing is, this is just one. I, I got two of these guys I have to do, so there's got to be a faster way. Oh, man. That's really... It's still so damn tight. I wonder if there's another way to do this, like... Like if I could just maybe maybe cut a slit here and put like a dart, like cut a hole in it, you know? Yeah, it's just so damn tight there, hold on. Yeah, I can see right where it's tight, hold on. It's right there. It's mostly the front, that's why I said this part right here. So just tackle it from the front. You know, I'm wondering, could I get in here with a rotary tool? Let's see if we can do this with a rotary tool. All right. Let's get the roughest bit that I have. This guy right here. Oops. Because that sanding thing was just going to take too long. So the trick is, is to put this on right about there so I keep it as long as possible so I can get a little bit more of a reach on it like that got it and then I'm going to uh, hit this right here yeah this might work all right so I'm definitely going to mute this guy so hold on
All right, moment of truth. Wow, it's it helped. It's <laughs> you know when I was doing it, I could feel like starting to hit some thins. One thing about the rotary tool is you, it's like that's the scary part is you don't want to go too. You're grinding, but you don't, you know, like right here it's super thin, and here it's still thick. So it's like the spot of like. That's the scary part with using a rotary tool is I don't want to grind all the way through. But um, maybe fo now I realize I can feel it. Yeah, this like it's really thin here. So the thick spots are still there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hold on. Let me just. Yeah, so this guy comes in handy. So. Here you go. It's painstaking. It is grinding. I mean, the the rotary tool does help, but it's it reminds me why I don't want to do it before because I don't want to grind. It's you can't. It's hard to control the depth of where you're at. I don't want to get too close to the surface, so I just want to do it gradually. But I think that that rotary tool broke the surface of the foam and the sanding drum did so i was able to uh get down to the raw foam and just start shaving a little bit more i think that helped a lot yeah because i as much as you cut it put a dart in there i'm always furious it's just, it's just gonna break the integrity and it's just gonna keep popping open every time i try to slide it on All right. All right, let's try it now. Yeah, it's a lot better. It's like, it's, oh yeah, because it's like before, I mean, I don't mind it being a little bit of a snug fit. It's just that before it was just next to impossible. So it's almost there. I'm going to do a little bit more grinding. Just a little bit more sanding. All right, guys, I'm just, I'm sorry, I'm focused. I'm just <laughs> See if this is going to work. I, I can feel it getting thinner. Hold on. Ooh, it's a little, yeah, I got a little thin on this side. You can see where that drumming got a little crazy. Um, but. Yeah, it's a lot better. A lot better. See, there you go. Back this up a little bit so you guys can see. See, so the plan was, yeah, oh my God, it's so much easier now. Um, so, tell you what, since we have this guy, let's go ahead and clean it up with the sanding guys right here. And smooth it all back out.
try again. Oh, so much easier. All right, now. Uh, let me feel. Let me try to feel where it's grabbing still. Let's see, it's right. Yeah, all right. Time to so go back. Mm. Yeah, still is a little bit here. This spot right here too. Hold on, guys. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use the rotary tool really quick. So mute you for a second. All right, let's see if that helps. Oh, it does, big time. Wow, yeah, so definitely want to grind on that too. So basically, let's see. Oh, yeah, that, man, that made a big difference. So mostly, I think it's, the problem is mostly here in the front. I'd be damn. Yeah, it might be it. So let me go ahead. Uh, let's hit this. Well, let's not overdo it, Ted. Let me double check here. Right. Yeah, excellent. So what we're going to do now, it's all, you know, shaved up and stuff. We're going to go ahead and seal it back up with heat. So the heat gun. And we're going to just, because now it's just kind of like ripped up foam. So we're going to seal the foam back up. So it's a little bit smoother. So I'm going to just push the hand right through there. So let's go and fire this up. Ooh, that's okay, it's hot. All right, moment of truth. Here we go. Ta-da! Yeah, you can see the hand kind of moving. <laughs> Let that cool off a little bit, but uh, that does slide on a lot easier than it did before. Still a bit of a snug fit, but um, not bad. All right, that's the right side. Now, I got to do this all over again on the left side. <laughs> All right, let's move back. Sorry, guys. Move it back. That's what we're going to do for today. Um, tomorrow, oh, we're going to work on the spikes. Uh, catch up with chat really quickly here. Lane Steele says, hello, not so evil Ted. Dude, of course I'm evil. It says right here, right here. It says evil Ted. Here. Yeah, here. It says yeah, evil Ted. Anyway, I love it. I was on a, doing a um, online costume thing, 
and people thought my background was a green screen image, and I was like, oh, no, it's an actual physical sign. <laughs> but you guys follow me on Twitch and stuff, you already knew that, but uh, some people thought it was a, uh... hey, San Antonio, Texas, what's up? Welcome. Evening from South Africa. Hello, South Africa. The only uh, cat, canoids, 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 canoids. Mm. I am great with foam and terrible with names, guys. I apologize. I have like suffered dyslexia and have like a third grade reading level. But um, with that all um, against me, I'm still able to make a career out of this. Amazing. <laughs> Let me um, yes, pick my my sign easy. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's what we're, we're pretty much wrapped up for today. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to do the foam spikes. Um, I'll show you here. I'll show you the nightmare I'm dealing with on those guys. Um, two things. I made these shoulders, and, like, oh, they look so cool and menacing. And I realized they're so big, you can't pack it, they're, like, because they're so huge, right? So I went to the trouble to cut them. And, of course, I did a whole big video on it. Uh, to make them replaceable with magnets. Now it's great for stills and photo shoots, but it's not really con friendly because you're walking around, beep, you just you bump a corner or you bump into something, which you always bump into people, and then the next thing you know you're flying off. Unless you have a handler that's like a ninja watching 24 7 to catch these things, they fall off, you're gonna lose them. So uh, I'm going to just not make them removable. I'm gonna take these spikes. Well, I'm gonna make new spikes. These guys are just too long. I'm gonna make spikes half this length. I'm just going to uh, pull the magnets and everything out of them and just cut new spikes about, about this big, super short, and just glue them on, make them permanent. So it's a lot easier to travel with. And I'm gonna do the foam. I'm gonna do the um, the glue on the, um, the on the on the actual foam itself to keep the tips crisp and sharp, and then seal on top of that. But yeah, it's like it's just man. I like this costume. It's just I, I just the reason why I don't travel with it. And uh, people loved it when we put it on a display mannequin when I was at the Enemy Los Angeles. Uh, uh, first year I went, and the second year that when I display that costume, people just loved it. Um, and like, oh my god! And I thought, well, it'd be more people would love it even more if I wore it. So I realized I don't wear it that often because it was a nightmare to wear. And so I'm going to make it less of a nightmare and fix all the things. And the other thing too is I don't like the feet. The feet are terrible. Uh, I just threw them together because I was running out of time. So I make these like these metal boots, and they just like they look like just like they're just like shoes with plating on them, and just they don't match the rest of the costume. Like everything's so ornate, like the gloves and the shoulders and the helmet, and everything's so ornate. And the shoes are like these like like little silver bumps, like they look lame. So uh, I need to make shoes to fit the costume. It's one of my uh, big things. Uh, I, I highly recommend having a ninja handler, dude. Right? I would too. Uh, yeah, but I gotta go and rewatch my Sister of Battle Helmet tutorial since I bought those patterns and I want to know what I'm doing before I start. Um, yeah, I, I'm doing that video right Well, sorry, by the time I. You probably had your helmet done before then. Uh, his instructions, Metal Mind's instructions are really good. Um, I'm just. I just. I want I want to make I'm making one I'm making a battle sister but I'm making um, the, uh, the, sh the the neck ring and the shoulder pieces the body armor is like any female body armor you, you can get any female body pattern and make it your own as a battle sister but uh, I'm making the uh, neck ring and shoulder because I looked around because I'm lazy when it comes to building guys I won't lie and if I could find something pre-existing I'd buy it and unfortunately nobody's made a battle sister like neck ring or shoulder so I'm making one I figure once it's done I'm gonna make it available uh, that's on. That's one of the projects I want to do. I'm making a battle sister, but I'm I still kind of figure out the problems because I the McFarlane. I really like the McFarlane toy they came out with with the shoulder. I really like their shoulders. The battle sisters originally had these flat plates on the shoulders, like these big um, kind of V things. It just kind of they don't really have much depth to them. They kind of drop off, and there's two underneath each, each other. And I thought they looked. And McFarlane did the same thing I would have done. He just took the design and embellished on it, made the shoulders look more like shoulder armor. Uh, and I really like what he did, so I'm kind of matching his toy for the shoulder p patterns I'm going to do. And I was trying to wing it, and I realized I'm just going to have to sculpt it out of foam, out of styrofoam, and figure out the pattern, because I, I know I want organically, I know how I want the shape. So it's, well, 
trouble figuring it out, so I'm going to just carve it and make a pattern off of that. But um, everybody, again, thank you so much for hanging out today uh, on my YouTube live stream. Uh, I might um, I'm also I'm going to be back again tomorrow when we're working on the shoulders. Okay. What time? What time do we start? I start at nine. And usually I usually stream for like. Yeah, that's that's good. Usually about two hours, but it all I pretty much got the hand thing figured out and. It's not really fun watching me do the same thing twice, so because it's on those arms, but that that does make a huge difference. Let me try. It's a little, it's it's a little easier. It's just not as hard as it was, but yeah. Man, what a pain in the ass to put these things on. But yeah, check it. Like the painting, all the work I put in this thing is crazy. This stuff is all two millimeter. It was a nightmare. I remember like drawing this stuff up. Like I covered the whole thing with, uh, I made this pattern first and covered it in foil and duct tape and figured out the pattern on this thing. And just like, yeah, it really came together. I just love it. Make it together. It's one of those things where I had an image of something I found on Pinterest and I just went nuts with it. And yeah, everything looks great except for the shoes. The shoes suck. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for hanging out today. Uh, please, what you could do to help me, guys, in this channel and keep my business going and my YouTube, people always ask me, do you still work in the movie industry? I do sometimes. I do little, um, I don't do the big shows anymore, but I do little independent projects because my friends are filmmakers, so I don't mind helping people on small, low-budget movies. But uh, if you guys can do me a big favor, uh, go to my website, eviltedsmith.com, click on that Amazon link, and when you click on that link, that takes you to your account. So bookmark that Amazon link. And every time you shop through Amazon, I get kickback with no extra cost to you. That helps a lot. So every time you're shopping or doing anything for Amazon, which everybody does, Amazon, huge billionaire empire that it is, bookmark that link. So every time you shop, if it's for cosplay or not even cosplay, just simple things you're shop buying, you need, go through my link. That helps a lot. And also, if you guys noticed, all my t-shirts and merch are listed below the video. I have a Teespring shop set up on my YouTube channel. So if you guys want to buy merch, um, I used to do this thing on Bonfire, but I would do always, they would always do it like once a month or once a couple of weeks. And I just want to have the shirts on for sale 24 seven. So they are now available 24 seven down my channel. You'll see the Teespring string, click on those. If you guys haven't bought a shirt, one of my shirts today is, it's the passion, not the talent. And you too can get one of these shirts. Just go with the TV stream. I have this one. I have the Foam Fanatics. I, have, of course, have the Evil Ted Channel shirt. Foam Fanatics. And I'm working on making more shirts. I have some ideas I want to do and some ideas. And I want to make more purchases because Kamui Cosplay crushed it with all her shirts. She was smart. When she released her shirt, she didn't have one or two. She had a bunch. And that's my plan, too, is I want to start building up a bunch of designs. And once we have them all done, make a bunch of shirts and um, open up a new sale. So we're going to have all my old shirts plus new ones. Everybody, thank you so much. Mm -mm -mm. I'm so used to going on Twitch, you can raid people, but there's no raids here. We just wrap it up. <laughs> so again, guys, thank you so much. Jump on my website, subscribe. And if you guys want to know what I'm going to be doing next, go to my website. There's the event page I have listed for both the cons I'll be at. All the information is there. If you want to know what's going to be happening next or what I'm going to be streaming next, Get on my mailing list. I do an email every week to keep people up to date what's going on. So please, this is very impromptu because I was going to do a, a, a newsletter, but it was just so kind of like, I thought about the, like, the night before, like, oh, wait a minute, let's just do that tomorrow. So about this costume thing. So I just did that. All right, guys, thank you so much. Catch you back next time right here on the Evil Ted channel. <laughs>